Hello guys and welcome back to another update tutorial for Amp Creator. So today what we're going to be actually updating is a furnace tutorial that I worked on a long time ago. Not much has changed, but uh, there is some better ways to go about doing things. So I thought I would update the tutorial and uh, give you a brand new demonstration. So basically what this one is, is a furnace. So what is basically it does is it uses custom block and a custom GUI to create something very similar to a regular vanilla furnace. If we just scroll down a little bit, we can actually get the pretty similar GUI set up. It's similar. It doesn't have the auto crafting thing or the search for all this stuff because it's completely procedure based. So it doesn't actually use the vanilla recipes at all. So you have to plug in a recipe each time that you want to add something new. Uh, with that being said, um, this would be your fuel or your smelting slot. This would be your fuel slot. And then you have like a progress bar to show um, how much time is left uh, before the item is smelted. And this is your output slot. Um, as far as hopper support, it's a little bit more complicated to add support for that just at the moment. Hopefully it will be fixed in the near future that uh, you can actually... Uh, disable hopper interactions with certain things without disabling support for the actual player to interact with the slots because that kind of breaks the entire system. So uh, with that being said, I do have one recipe set up. Uh, it's basically just putting fuel in the um, slot here and then we can basically put something in the smelting slot and it will basically go ahead and set up the uh, smelting so it'll smelt a few things and uh, depending on the fuel type uh, it will vary on how many items you can actually smelt so it's very similar to a regular uh, furnace I also have it set up for the same time for smelting as a regular furnace you can then adjust that as you want but um, yeah so you can set up different types of fuel if you wanted to use um, lava buckets you could do that too we'll set up another one over here We'll use a lava bucket instead and we'll just put that in here and we'll grab some cobblestone and you can see that it uses up the uh, lava but provides a bucket so we can basically reuse the bucket so I've set that up specifically for lava buckets and it will have the same uh, fuel capacity as if you were to um, go ahead and basically feel like feel something with a lava bucket so i think it smelts something like 120 items or something like or something similar so yeah that's basically it um the progress bars i've done a tutorial on how to do that before so it's uh pretty simple stuff but um i'll cover it in today's video as well and yeah so let's get started in m crater and i'll show you how it all works all right so i've tried to organize things in a specific order as much as possible. Uh, the blocks and GUI and uh, there's a few folders in the main actual workspace so you guys can easily browse certain things. Recipes are the recipes for the actual um, smelting recipes and stuff like that so these are the custom procedures we'll cover that uh, today as well. There is tags which are used for the fuel and specific items. There will be a few things that you need to basically set up in here for some things. So keep that in mind where the tags are. I'll cover that in a little bit as well. And then we have the procedures. These are the uh, main procedures. One furnace block added, um, furnace fuel script. There's the uh, furnace on update tick. So this is basically every time that it uh, runs uh, furnace update tick which is one's the on uh, version of the furnace the other one is when it's off and then we have the main recipe script so this is where you basically be adding the recipe and calling it into existence and then it'll be used in probably the update tick of one of the um, furnaces uh, progress this is where all the conditions for the images for the actual GUI are stored so 
uh, those I'll cover in a little bit. They are a little bit different for the math behind uh, which ones are actually being shown. So you will need to import and set up all 10 of these for um, the actual thing. So I will provide the actual images in the download as well. And then for the blocks and stuff, it's pretty pr pretty generic stuff. Uh, recipes, again, are just one procedure, so. All right, so let's start with the blocks. Uh, there are a few resources that you'll need. You'll need the nine different, or pardon me, 10 different, um, is it 10 or 11? I think it's 11 different um, actual smelting progress bars. So I'll provide those. And then the GUI is there, it's already been generated, so we don't need to worry about that. And then you'll need your basic textures for your blocks as well. But other than that, there's no other resources. So we'll start with the furnace. And this is the off one. So you can see the textures are set up like this. Uh, the Y rotation we want to set to the uh, southwest northeast direction for player side and for bounding box it's just a solid cube so we don't need to worry about that it's uh, we can leave it default uh, the properties here I've set the material type to rock and put the furnace under the decorations tab so this is the only furnace that actually goes under a creative tab because it is the off version and this is the main one that basically we put down to set up all our variables and such so this is where this one comes in uh the resistance and hardness um oh hold on a second uh, i messed up that So uh, the resistance and hardness is um, 3.5. Uh, that's what a regular furnace has. And the other properties are all the same as how the default generation is set up. Uh, we have it for a pickaxe. Now, the reason why we actually have the material set to rock is so we can basically have a requirement to mine it with pickaxe. Uh, the requirement though is for I believe a stone stone material item so something good like stone or higher so basically a pickaxe that is stone or higher will be able to mine this particular block and everything else is basically set up just for other default settings now the sound has been configured to stone but uh, outside of that that's basically the same thing all right, so the tick rate we need to set to one. This is going to be very specific for what we need for actually smelting. It's tick generated. So every tick that it basically runs the update tick procedure, we need it to be exactly one tick. Uh, this will help with the timing and stuff like that. So make sure that's set up to one tick. Uh, one other thing that you will want to do is reaction to being pushed because it does have an inventory with slots. You want to block the uh, reaction uh, to being pushed. Uh, reason why this is set up is um, so items don't actually break and fall out. Uh, Minecraft Vanilla basically does that with chests and other blocks like furnaces, crafting tables, stuff like that. So anything with a GUI basically sets up this way. I'm not sure why they do it, but it's important. So make sure it's set to block. I forgot to do that. Particles, if you want to add particles, you can. Uh, we do need to enable the MBT and for a furnace, uh, what you're going to need is your GUI. Your GUI needs a total of, I believe, three slots. So you need to set up three for the inventory slots and it's best to keep the stack size for 64 in this particular case. Now you do want to drop items from the inventory and you might want to get comparator output data. Now, like I said before, these values uh, for disabling hopper interactions don't really work because it will also block the um, actions for the player when they're trying to put it in or um, try to pull something out. So just leave these blank for now. Um, I have opened a bug report. I'm not sure what the status is for it. So hopefully the M creator will actually be able to fix that in the future and just have it um do slot uh, do the what do you call it? the uh 
what is it called the hoppers instead of both the hoppers and players because it's kind of moved over to the inventory as well so we can actually disable interaction through the inventory all right so the energy and storage there isn't any of that this is all variable based so we don't need to worry about these things um i might do a tutorial in the future adapting this particular um script to set up for a forge energy thing but i want to cover how forge energy basically works first so that will be important for me to get that out of the way in order to actually do a tutorial on it i do plan on doing that pretty soon so um hopefully we'll be able to update uh, this particular tutorial with a forge energy version uh, but this one is just using fuel instead so that's what we currently have uh, triggers we have two different triggers here we have the wind block added uh, this is basically going to set up our main variables uh, fuel which is basically used for determining how much fuel that the block has uh, max time which is basically how long the time it takes to smelt something now if you want to change this uh, the default one for a regular furnace is 200 if you want a blast furnace it is 100 so you can change that between those if you want to or set a custom value depending on how you want it set up uh, smelting time this is basically the timer just ignore this and the top one here the only one that you should be able should be changing is the max time uh, that's the only one that should be changed in this particular uh, variable count all right so with that being said the update tick is a little bit more complicated it's um has a couple different um, mechanics going on here. So the first thing that we're doing is we are going and uh, basically setting up the uh, furnace fuel script. So we need to set up that procedure first. Uh, before you actually import this, it's probably best to just have it off like this and then save it because you'll have to set up a few different things in order for this particular thing to, to actually work so for example um, if you attach it here and this isn't set up properly uh, for the furnace fuel script then it will basically run into an error so make sure that it's uh, basically disconnected until you set up the link up the procedure now the fuel script um, again we'll go into the procedures folder and we'll open up the fuel script this basically just has the script that will go ahead and uh, check for if there's an item in the fuel um, slot and then it will basically calculate how much fuel it needs and then it will go ahead and subtract that value from the item if it's a uh, if it's a um, what do you call it a lava bucket or something it'll basically just put a bucket in the output slot instead but if it's any other item, such as a cold block, um, kelp block, blaze rod, uh, coal, then it will put the properties of that particular item for how much smelting ticks it actually does. And it'll set the fuel to that number. It'll also set a remove item. Uh, this will basically go and run down here which will basically just subtract one from the stack of item. Now, if this is false, like it is with the bucket, then it will basically just run something out the end of it. Uh, this is used in a couple procedures, uh, so make sure that you import this properly and set it all up. Uh, the only thing that you really need to change is... Actually, I don't think there's anything that you need to change in this procedure. Uh, it should be all set up for vanilla use so you should have everything set up all right um, this does actually have a additional script in here though uh, what this does is it checks if the um, the there's a hopper below and if there is a hopper below then it's going to remove the item and put the bucket into the output slot I don't have something set up for basically testing if there's a hop like a hopper above put something in because it would probably put it into a whole bunch of other slots so um, yeah it's just I, I have support for removing it but I don't have support for adding it in unfortunately because it, it's just not possible to do that at this time all right so there's that procedure update tick now once you this is basically called in it has a couple uh, tags that it's looking for in the item 
uh, item tags. So what it's doing is it's basically going ahead and testing if uh, the furnace slash recipe item. So if it is a recipe item in the uh, actual smelting slot and a furnace slash fuel item tag. So basically if there's a fuel item in the fuel slot. So if there's those two things, then it's going to run this procedure. And if the value of the fuel is greater than zero, so if it's not zero, anything above, then what it's going to do is it's going to replace the block uh, with the on furnace and it's going to keep the state and the MBT. So basically the rotation and the inventory slash and uh, inventory slash MBT tags. And then down below, what we're doing is we're going to test a few things. Now, the reason why we have this set up, this part right here, now generally you would just need to do that, but there was a little issue with uh, some ticking and stuff like that. So basically what's going on is this script here is going to get the block that the player is looking at and it's going to basically when you open up the inventory and it replaces the block you want to basically have the inventory open up for the net, the same block so i'm testing if the player or the server player is basically um exists within a five block radius of or a five cube of the actual block itself if this is true then what I'm doing is I'm basically going ahead and then I'm testing if the um, block at the certain location, which is testing for the um, ray tracing position, so exactly the point of view where the player is looking at, is a furnish, furnace on block. So we already set the furnace on block here. Now, if this is true, then what we're doing is we're going to open up the GUI for that particular block. So that's basically what we're doing here. We're just setting the inventory uh, fuel. And what will happen is when the inventory gets changed, um, instead of basically going ahead and just uh, closing out the GUI or just keeping it with the old one, um, it will update and then you'll not run into any uh, GUI, like, some things like in the GUI will still work, but um, if you see the output slot, it won't actually put the items in the output slot. It'll just consume items for some reason. So this basically fixes that issue. So um, we have to do that each time that we switch over the blocks and ray tracing actually really helps with that. So this part is really mandatory for fixing that bug. But uh, outside of that, we're just updating the block in general. All right, so that's that, and generation, obviously no generation. It's not a or block or, or generation, so we don't need that. Uh, the other block is the furnace on. Same exact procedures, and well, not procedures, but the texture is a little bit different. The main one is just showing that there is a kind of like lava or something in it, and then we have the same rotation. Bounding box is the same. Um, couple things are different here so this one should be set to 0 0.6 because I messed up on the code for that uh, but everything else should be the same this should actually drop the custom or the the off version so it should drop the off version instead of the on version but outside of that it should be the exact same and the creative pick item should be the off version as well. Uh, advanced properties, again, you want to make sure that it's set to block. Uh, reason why is the same reason. Uh, the update tick should still be one and everything else is the same as the other one. Uh, inventory, same thing, uh, same amount of slots, same max size and the um, open one GUI clicked and the same inventory. So all this is the same as before and you need to enable the MBT for the actual item. Triggers, there's only a update tick for this. So if we open that up, it's a little bit different than the other one. We are doing the same thing here when it runs out of fuel. So when fuel equals zero, it's going to basically disable the, replace the block to the off version and basically do the same trick that we did with the on version. So with uh, opening the old off version GUI. 
A uh, couple things here though, uh, what we're doing is we're testing if the fuel is greater than one. If that is true, uh, what we're doing is we're going to subtract one from fuel. Uh, this basically just um, keeps decreasing it each tick. And um, if it is not um, one, so if it reaches zero, then what we're doing is we're going to test if there is a fuel item in the slot. So this is basically where the fuel slot or fuel script comes in again. And then down below what we're doing is we're testing if there is a, uh, the fuel is greater than one again. And if it is, then what we're doing is we're going to basically test if smelting is less than max time. So basically what this does is it will, um, determine if the timer is still counting up. And if the timer does count up, then we can actually increase the value by one. So each tick that will, will basically increase that value by one. Now the smelting time, again, is basically how long the time it takes to, I think it, it's um, the smelting time, pretty sure it's that one. So we'll go into, block added so max time is the total time smelting so if it is um, say you set it to 200 then the smelting time is the variable that we keep increasing the timer by so this is basically the timer that we take to increase until we get them to the maximum smelting time for the block now if it is um, the same as the time then what we want to do is we want to set that value to zero for smelting time and we want to make sure that we run our main recipe script now the main recipe script is this one right here i only have one recipe set up so basically what we're doing is we're going down to advance and we're calling the procedure and we don't need the one with the x y and z that's not really important for this particular setup we just need to make sure that we link up the recipe for that uh, for the recipe, um, if we go back to our recipes, and there is one called Furnace Cobblestone Recipe. So this is basically the script that you just need for getting the recipe set up. I'll make sure to provide it in the uh, download so you guys can use it. What it's doing is it's going to test for a couple things. It's going to test if the... Um, smelting slot has the actual item that we need to smelt and then what it's going to do is it's going to test for one of two things if this if it's the um, output slot for the actual item is either zero which basically means if it's empty and if that's not true then what it's going to do is it's going to test if the output slot of the item is stone and that it's less than 64. Now, if that's all true, then what it's going to do is it's going to remove one from the smelting slot. And then it's going to basically go ahead and add a one item to the output slot. So this is basically just getting the output slot count, increasing it by one. And then we're basically making sure that it sets it up as stone. And then we're going to do that in slot two, which basically says, okay, get the slot two item and put it into the item for the slot two. So it's going to increase that number by one. So if it's like 63 or whatever, then it's going to increase to 64. All right. So again, this, uh, if it's greater, equal to, or greater than 64, obviously you can't go over 64. So if it, it is 64, it won't try to add more items to that particular stock, that stack. Uh, reason being is we don't want it to actually go over and continue smelting as you would lose a lot of items that way. So we need to test if it's um, lower than 64, which would be 63. In that case, we're just smelting one item. So we're increasing it by one and then we're basically putting it in. So that's that. Um, the only other thing that we have left to cover is the tags. So there are a few things that will need to be added. Uh, you might have noticed a couple tags in the procedures. Um, I'll cover those quickly. Um, did I actually cover everything in here? Yeah, I did. So below is just the part where it basically replaces it back to the thing if the fuel is zero after it runs the script. 
So if there isn't any fuel by the time it goes into here, it's just going to re re replace it to the off um, off block, and then it will just reset it. So that's that, and then generation again, nothing nothing special. So that's basically set up that way. Uh, the other thing is the GUI. So again, we have a few different things here. We have the slot for the uh, smelting slot. We have one for the fuel slot. And we have our output slot here. You might notice that there are images for the progress bar all the way down to 10. So we have set up all of these. Uh, each one of these has a specific procedure for this, the type of thing that it's for. Uh, the only one that doesn't have it is the progress bar zero, which doesn't actually have an image display condition. Now the conditions again are found under procedures. Um, the progress and then you can kind of see all the different things that are happening here so the reason why that we have a couple other tags is the furnace slash recipe item now this is going to basically uh, determine if the recipe item is in the um, crafting slot now if it is then we want to basically run this procedure now this is basically a catch so it won't um, basically show if it's smelting still, if it has no item left in the smelting slot. So that's really important for setting that part up. I'll cover the tags in a little bit. So every time that you add a recipe item, you'll have to add it to this particular tag. Um, again, if you want to change the tag, you'll have to put it under a different namespace and you'll have to set up your tag how you want it. So in this case, the category for it is furnace. And then I've just basically put a recipe recipe item for the actual item that we're or the tag that name that we're actually using so i'll cover the tags in just a second so basically what it's doing is it's just returning true and it's going to um return false if it is it if it isn't uh, all this the math behind this is going to be different for depending on which one you click on so again if we click on like five you can see the math is a lot different than something like one so uh, you'll have to import all these different uh, progress bar things, unfortunately. But that's basically what's going on with the um, ones like this. It's just getting the display condition and it will display it based on the math that are in those particular display conditions. All right, so that's basically it. Um, I just need to cover the tags now. So if we go into the tags, then we have a few different ones. Uh, there is the fuel blaze tag. Now these are the fuel ones that I've set up for the fuel uh, script uh, all the way up to here. But the other ones here is furnace fuel. Uh, basically, what I need to do, what you need to do is basically add all the fuel items that you basically input into the fuel into this category here. It's used in some of the other script. So again, coal blocks, kelp, um, coal, both different different types of coal. There's charcoal and regular coal. Lava buckets and blaze rods are all different fuel items. So that's how it's set up there. And then the fuel recipe item, this is where you're going to be adding all your, um, your basically your input slots for your fuel items. So anything that um, you basically go ahead and set up in this particular thing will be needed for the item that goes into slot one. So make sure that you add that. Now we only have cobblestone for our input slot for the recipe. So this is the reason why it's only in this one. But outside of that, um, it's pretty much done. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.